Yeah, that, that's my sister, man. That's my sister. Oh, no, you know she peeps. And this is my man right here. He said he's a, um, you know, Pastor Major, he's a, um, what do you call honorary member of Sunday Seminary. Amen, 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 amen. He come through all the time. He support. But now, but listen to this. Whilst we have you on, I have two things, because I know why they're going to get me, because they said last time, uh, Berean, he gave all of those books. Um, do you have any books you want to recommend? I would rather wait. I'm going to get Dr. Vince Band to one here in a minute. I just hit him. Do you have anything you'd like to recommend to the people, one? And two, before you get out of here, I do want to mention how my stance with the urban apologetic community and people like Majors and Sister E, you know that's my sister pride with me. And, and stuff like that. So I want to talk about, I want to talk about two things. Can you recommend some books? One, that's the first thing. You got anything out, anything new that you recommend for the people to read to get, you know, just knowledge on this whole thing? Well, um, well, um, you know, it, I think, I think more than urban apologetic stuff, I think we just need to understand. Uh -oh, uh oh, he got that book. Global Christianity. Um, you know, let me pull up my Amazon real quick. Wait a minute, I'm wait a minute, ma wait a minute. He signed your book, Major. How major got a copy of that woke church and it signed? He was at the he was at the he was at the conference, man. Major showed love, man. I got love for brother major. I uh, wait, I got the wait, hold on. Matter of fact, that's right. White is your book signed? Is your book signed? I got mine on Kindle. He ain't thinking about signing my book. He ain't even accept my friend request on Facebook. Man, <laughs> <laughs> white. Oh, oh wow! Oh, oh, not not Thomas. This is what happened, bro. So, so <laughs> on my face, on my personal Facebook page, it keeps warning me that I have a thousand people that's trying to be friend. I no, I, I listen, listen. I already I know. I already I know. I need a friend request. So I'm gonna go on Facebook right now, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. Whilst you remember, <laughs> so, so, let me see Facebook. I'm gonna put it up now. I'll be trying to get the wait, wait, don't wait. Don't forget you pulling up those, you pulling up the books too, right? Yeah, it's a, it's some books you got to read, man. It's some books you got to read. Let me tell no, Thomas White. I'm gonna do it right now while we in here so everybody can know that I hate <laughs> on my brother. And he got witnesses. So is, is, it right is it under Thomas White? Is it under Thomas White? I'm gonna send I'm gonna send it back out to you. But but yeah, I, I deleted it because I was like, you know, he probably got no. like a million. He probably got no, a million. Are, you, people are you in here in a black t-shirt? Yeah, I, I just redid it. You know, okay, I got, boom. I got all these friends. Friend it. There you are, brother. Oh man. Bless my oh, bless my Hold on. Let me look. Let me look. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look in the comments too in case there's any questions because they really asked before about uh, the books. And not, you did give some books, but I know a lot of people, you know, that they appreciate that. And they all, you know, they so I know they're gonna ask me that once we get off. We appreciate you, Greg Taylor. Dr. Aaron got a question. You know, he wants to bring up some 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 Genesis theories here. Uh, he wants to know your opinion on the framework hypothesis uh, by uh, Dr. Meredith Klein. Now, talk to me about the framework hypothesis. Is he talking about form criticism? Um, if I'm if I'm looking at this correctly, it's a theory trying to harmonize proposed early chapters of Genesis. Um, Where is he reading? This is answers in Genesis. Um, Ed Gibson question. Here, let me let me let me share real quick. All right, so answers in Genesis. It talks about the framework hypothesis. Now I don't know Meredith the client's position, uh, but uh, oh, we ain't talking about that right now. I want to talk about the I want to talk about them books, and I want to talk about these Hebrews right now. All right, we got, well, we got know, the bishop right here. I want to talk about that. these Hebrews because Bishop people are upset with me. People that's are the first, because that's the first time I heard that one. He upset, people upset with me because Major, my friend. People upset with me because I got Sister E on here every single day, but she don't really represent Israel. Man, a, a, good, a good book that, that he has to get is Egypt, Canaan, and Israel in Ancient Times by Donald B. Redford. Okay. And, and that's some good stuff that Hebrews need to dive into. Oh, hold, um, on, hold on. Why you got that? You got that? I mean, you know I'm trying to pull it up on Kindle. Give us another one. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to look at all of these in here that I picked up recently. Um, you know about Benjamin Summers, the bodies of God and the world, and the, um, the body of, of God and the world of ancient Israel. Yeah, I got that. I got that. How's that? I'm, I'm just we, we we just getting ready to do something on that right now. I have I haven't read it, but I have it in my library. I, okay. I, I use a lot of stuff 
for uh for reference works. Um, oh, just to okay, you know, because because one of the things you got to be able to do, like people think you just read a bunch of books, but you got to have stuff in your library that you use as references. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, especially when you're sourcing stuff and writing a book. What is it? Egypt, Canaan. Thank you. That's why. All right, I got it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Grace yeah, and yeah. peace, leader for Christ. Grace and peace. Another a good a good a two good books that you got to get in there is by David Flusser. Okay. The first book. This is about the people that talk about Jesus didn't exist and, and all this other stuff. Um, it, 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 it's David Flusser. One of them is called Jesus. It's just called Jesus. The second one is called The Sage from Galilee, Rediscovering Jesus' is Genius. Doc. David Flusser? Yeah, F-L-U-S-S-E-R. F-F-E-R, Fluffer. F-L-U-S-S-E-R, Flusser. Oh, you. Yeah, and so it basically breaks down the history, the study. It's a study about the historical Jesus. These are some of the top books on this kind of stuff. You know, um, of course, Dan Wallace on Jesus Revisited. That thing is ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember I got, I remember got that two years ago when you first were discussing that good stuff. I like Wallace in general. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, man. I think, let me just say this. Um, you know, I think that, I think that, you know, you were talking about the Hebrew brothers and sisters. Yes. I don't think I'm talking about specifically I, these right here that I, that I deal with. I ain't talking about them other four. I'm talking about the ones that these what we consider moderate. So listen, help us out with that right there. Yeah, I'm, I think everybody's just trying to understand. Understand. I, 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 this is this is the issue. This is what I will say about. And, it, and it's not the blank blanket state, everybody. This is to say how a lot of Christians view Hebrew Israelites. A lot of the, 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 the challenge that is people have with just Hebrew Israelites in general is there's no there are no books and no places to go to say what people specifically believe. OK, so so that, that you say, OK, this is our doctrinal statement. So I think what will help with moderates with um, with people understanding moderates is number one. Are, 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 are you con like how are you connected biblically to the to the historic doctrine of the way, right? And and and, and, and you know I think that's number one. You got that white? Go you got to do a video on that. Like how like are you connected to it or not? And because then I think what's confusing is a lot of moderates are uh, like not a lot of moderates. A few moderates have interactions with with not camp Hebrew Israelites, but Hebrew Israelites who spend a lot of time like that don't even necessarily believe in the new, like in the, in, in biblical canonicity. And so when, when you have, when you have some of the guys, I don't feel like mentioning their names, but it's some guys is kind of like, man, like, like, do, like you would call them brother and build with them. But, I, but are they, are they brothers according to the flesh and spirit or are they, like it's confusing sometimes. And so I think that's a huge, 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 huge deal. Well, Christians are like, they don't know what moderates believe. They don't know why, what's the importance of them announcing the Hebrew identity. I don't think anybody's against moderates. I think that people are just trying to say Hebrew Israelite doctrine from the moderate perspective, there's no one place to go to say, okay, hey, we believe in the gospel. This is what we believe about the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what we believe the relationship is between the law and the gospel. Um, like I don't, I, you know, I, I think like, like a book that I'm going through right now is the book called Continuity Discontinuity, right? And, and, and it walks through, um, it walks through the different ways in which different Christians try to reconcile the relationship between the, the gospel and the law. And I think sometimes, I don't think people necessarily understand what moderates view of even the Trinity is the deity of Christ. Simple stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like the, do you believe that Christ is God? Do you believe that, that all scriptures is inspired? Do you use the Apocrypha? Um, do you reject the camps? Um, like they're not just, not just the, the, their actions, but also the doctrines, which they don't view Jesus Christ as God, you know, um, the they, virgin they, birth, some of them. Yeah. yeah the virgin birth. Um, the different varying ways in which um, they 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 view scripture, like they view the apocrypha, like and then this is a term that Christians are trying to understand. This truth, 
Like for a Christian, when you say, when I came into this truth, we're like, where in the Bible is your identity as an Israelite called this truth? You know, I thought Jesus was the truth. So I think it's confusing when, when, when Hebrew identity seems to have an exalted disposition, people talking about they're waking up. Like, where does the Bible say, where, what is a doctrine of waking up? That's uh, is, it, Waking up is in Ephesians 5 about you waking up to Christ being the Lord, not... You say identity. waking up, if using waking up separate from being Absolutely. saved, separate that's from the gospel. That's very confusing. Like, when you say, because I heard moderates say, you know, when I came into this truth, I'm like, I, I don't, is that a truth to come into? Or is it just saying, hey, because I think a lot of Christians, I don't think many, like me, for me, and I'm going to talk about it in the book that I'm writing, like, I'm even, I'm going to shout out moderates and say, in, in a good way and say, hey, nobody's against anybody saying they're Hebrew. Like, that, like, that, like, but what, like. That's not the beef. But, but it Hebrew almost is not the beef. But the moderate, what, what it can feel like, I'm not saying this is what moderates do, what it can feel like is that moderates view themselves as separate from the global ecclesia, the church. And so it, it it's almost like we're this separate thing or a lot of moderates that I've personally come across aren't a part of a, of a, of a community of faith. They're individuals who study and just do online stuff. I'm like, so where yeah. do you fellowship with the saints? What where, is the second Corinthians chapter seven? Where is the, where is, where, where is the, the Hebrew chapter 10, not forsaking yourselves or gathering? You know, do you view being a Hebrew Israelite, like in the new Testament, all the Hebrew Israelites were in the church. So is Hebrew Israelism separate from the church? Like, I think sometimes that's real confusing. Okay. All right. That's a good point. Somebody else said like, oh, if they, if they wanted to have a doctrinal thing, like moderates versus camp doctrine versus moderate doctrine to clean things up. That's well, see, I would say that there are three different groups. Three or moder like, like I would say they're moderates, they're camps and messianic and, and non messianic non -Torah. No, 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 no. I'm talking about within black Hebrew. Bl I'm not going to say black Hebrew Israelites, but darker hue basically those who are having this awakening then you have people like uh ronald dalton ron shields um and the folk out of chicago who have the, who are old they're like the biggest hebrew israelite church community in the world they got over five thousand people there they say and so and then like the Huldas and her husband uh what's his name yeah, um, them. yeah and them like 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 we don't like a lot of christians see all of that as the same and so when someone says i'm not like them they say okay what makes you different and and, and really it's more so the caricature of camp groups in which they cussing out people making people lick their boots i'm like no 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 Th that's not the see that's not the only thing that's apparent within that type of hebrew israelite doctrine we saying the fundamental doctrines are corrupt but we don't know what the hebrew what the moderates believe that makes us brothers and sisters in christ does that make sense May that make sense to you, Major? He don't know. He can't. We can't hear him. That makes sense to you, Sister. Uh, let me see. Let me unmute him. You I think he's shaking his head. Because I because th that's what I've been trying to do, trying to help people understand the moderates to try to clear it up. But people act like sometimes, like, Berea, you muddy in the waters. You over there trying to act like they saved and they ain't saved. Yeah, I would never say that Majors and Kelly and Sister Isa saved. I, okay. I, would ne I would never go out and say that. Like, I, I just think we just people just don't understand where they stand on historic orthodoxy. That's really all people are saying, OK, you're Hebrew Israelite. Wonderful. That's fine. Where does where do you stand on the fundamental doctrines that unify the global and universal church? Like for me, that's the bigger issue, not whether somebody's a Hebrew Israelite. Not that DNA stuff and all of that. All right, Pastor Major, come on. I know you're busy. Um, just say a little bit something. We got Bishop here. Say a little something because you know I've been trying to help. I've been trying to help on one area and people offended what I'm doing. And this is my peeps over here. You my peeps. Say something, bro. Pastor. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to say, you know, shout out to uh, Dr. Mason out there, the panel, everybody. Everybody tuning in and logging on. Um, I think it's a legitimate concern um, because of the vast, broad uh, scope in which we see on the internet, online. So it's a general concern to the church. And I think that's very, very, very uh, important to the body of Christ to understand. Uh, Dr. Mason had a lot of a lot of questions. I can't tackle all of them kind of because he said a lot. Um, but I would say I think the best thing to do is if there is some type of relationship and dialogue like we're having right now, 
I think the best thing to do is ask the question like, okay, what is your position? Because it's kind of the same way I have to do with Christians. I have to ask them like, okay, what is your position on certain things? Because there's a lot of a broad variety of different kind of belief systems within Christianity as well. Um, so I think the important thing is to kind of sit down to kind of getting understanding that way we can say, okay, well, this type of this type of uh, Israelite or whatnot, which many of us who are moderates, we don't even just run around saying we Israelite. We don't run around say, hey, you know, you're an Israelite. We don't we don't do that type of stuff. Um, I think it's important to understand the deity of Christ, whether whether you believe, because that's the first thing that's going to make us brothers and sisters outside of any cultural things that we deal with. Because one that may be about a part of the body of Christ may not have the obligation or may not adhere to cultural things within Israel, the same way the early church was, and you had those who are Israelites who did follow cultural and custom things that were not following those things because of salvation purposes. But I would say that um, for me and kind of those who I'm associated with, I would say if the question was to ask, do we believe that Christ is God or Jesus is God, we would emphatically say yes. So that's, that's, that's out of the window right there. That's the first thing. Um, all those things first, uh, um, um, the biblical orthodoxy or whatnot, yes, we believe in the finished work of Christ. It's just that we also do understand that us as Israelites, we, there are some cultural things that we keep not for the purpose of salvation, but because it's a part of our custom. No different than when the church has um, um, pastor's appreciation day and things of that nature that may not be tied to uh, the Bible in per se, but at the same time, it may be tied to maybe a custom that is done within the church. Which that, we, that we do, that we've been doing for a long time. Right, right, which is nothing wrong with that. So I think that we have to kind of sit down and kind of hash those things out. That doesn't mean that every Israelite is going to have that same understanding. We can kind of get to the point of saying uh, or thinking that every Israelite, even if they're moderate, is going to believe the exact same thing because it depends on who you were discipled by basically to get an understanding of what doctrine you're going to adhere to. No different than within the church structure. Um, there are going to be those that may be Baptists, those that are Pentecostal, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they have a commonality that believe that Christ is Lord. And so it, I think that's the starting point to get an understanding of how we're going to deal with each other. And at the end of the day, hey, if you feel as though you believe that you're not an Israelite, I'm not going to slam you and say, hey, we, I can't fellowship with you. You just don't believe you're an Israelite. And that's cool. It, you don't have to be an Israelite to be a part of Boom Church. That's not even something we, I think when we've been around two years, I've only taught on it one time, heritage. So that's not even the, the, the point of our ministry. The point of our ministry. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. You got people in Boom Church that ain't Israel? Absolutely. Oh, see that? I didn't say that. That was good to talk. I didn't even know that. Hold on, Doctor. Now, we're talking, now we're talking, oh, I'm we're sorry. Talking ethnically, we're talking ethnically Israel. They don't identify ethnically Israel, but they are a part of Boom, and yet they do follow. You know, they, they come over like Israel did back in the days. They they keep the Passover with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but let me ask you a question, Doctor E. Um, he believed in the finished work. I don't question him about that. Is the Son Eternal? I question him. I question Kelly. I question Sister E. But my question to you is, Sister E is a little. She may. I don't, I don't want to start no beef right now, Sister E. You know I love you. I don't know if I'm gonna unmute you right now. How important is the canon when I'm dealing with my moderate people right here? Because they my peeps regardless. How important is the canon? Because Sister E like that first and second Maccabees. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, wait a minute. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. Dr. E, what do you think about first? And How important is the canon? The virgin birth, we're not playing with that. The finished work, we're not playing with that. But how important is um, acknowledging the, if we acknowledge the apocrypha or not to Christendom, to you? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with that um, because I, there were Christians in the early centuries that valued the apocrypha as Church they are, they are so I don't, that's not a fundamental Bible doctrine. I think for me, a fundamental Bible doctrine is if an Israelite, you know, and, and I'm not picking on him. Shout out to Ron Shields, right? And I know he's not. I, I don't know what you guys would call we don't, him. That's the main thing. We don't know what Ron believed. That's the main right. thing with a lot of people. Well, I know this. No, we do know this. We do know this. He believes um, <clears throat> he's, he's not a scholar in source, form, or higher criticism, Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic. He's not. 
Um, mm. um, I think he studies stuff, but I would say that I've heard him talk about manuscript evidence and c still trying to construct what the word of God actually is. Um, and so when I hear that, I'm like, so, and I'm not saying again, majors, I, shout out to you, brother. I mean, this is this. I'm not saying y'all believe these things. I'm just saying. No, they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. I'm, so I, I, I really, really hope they're hearing this. That I'm not saying they're the same. I'm just saying, for a guy that, for, for, for like, it's hard to know. Like, like, like again. I think the I think the challenge with the comparison that Christianity is not monolithic. Christianity has had two thousand years. And it's got a billion people in it. Yeah. I think for the, for, for the Hebrew Israelite community, let's just talk about all of them across the board. It's too young to me to be so hyper non-monolithic. Fragmented, so fragmented. Yeah, I, mean, it, I mean, so early. I mean, and so, um, and so there's not like, like in the early church, there was ways to unify and say, hey, this is what we want to believe. And we want to put this out there as a community this is what we believe. I think I think that's so important. Um, and this is what we believe the canon is. Like, I think when you have too much, well, I believe in this. Well, I, I think that to me, like, th we're not talking about, like, to me, like, th I think the example was given of, you know, annual days in the church. Like, we don't even view that as, like, I don't know if I would even look at that as even, I wouldn't even put that in the equation. Like, I don't, I, like, I don't really, relate to that you know i come from traditional black church but i don't relate to that as a as a fundamental cultural marker in church um okay. because that's not in the bible i think when someone's celebrating feast days i think there has to be rigorous theology put into why we still celebrate the feast that when they say it's a part of the cultural heritage i would say that in the new testament from what i see in the new testament that there is a diversity of how, and I'm going to use the word Jewish because the New Testament uses it. Yes. There's a diversity in how Jewish Christians viewed their relationship with the feast days. Um, you I have think a, Paul and them kept the feast to the end, James and them died keeping the Passover? I, I would say, I would say, I would definitively say Paul didn't keep the feast days as a part of his culture. It, I mean, that's, that's holy. When you, go, when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he tells you to the to the Jew. He, he, the he has a Jew and then he says, although not under the law. Now, when you go to I, I don't have it in front of me right now because my hands is cold from being outside. But Acts 20, Acts 22, you see Paul. You First off, you see Paul in Acts chapter 16 having um, Timothy get circumcised, not because of not because he values it as cultural heritage. Because, he of, the, because, because, of, because of the circum because of them people. Yeah. He didn't have it was because of mission, not because of cultural heritage. When you go over to Acts chapter 22, and I got to run, but Acts chapter 22, when he's over there and he went back, um, he went back to Jerusalem and dudes are like, yo, man, dudes are going to fry you up here, Paul. Yeah, they were like, waiting. You're going to have to pay all of these dudes dues for their Nazarite vow. And yeah, then yeah. you're going to like, he wasn't doing that because that was, he, he still was embracing Hebrew culture from, the, which I would say is being under the law as a rule of life, not. I don't think it's the same thing. I think, see, that's another thing. When somebody says this is our cultural heritage, like that's not even, in, that's like in the New Testament. And I would say even the Old Testament, it never calls keeping the law. And I'm not saying he keeps the law in the sense of for salvation or anything. So please hear me saying that. But when I hear cultural heritage, I just don't see that in the Bible. I see that as, I think there's a preference for us to say, hey, we're going to acknowledge Yom Kippur, but ultimately Jesus says, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you find That's eternal life, yeah. but all of them speak of me. So now we're using Yom Kippur as a way to exalt how Christ fulfills it. If somebody does that, I'm like, amen. But if they say it's cultural heritage, I say you have the freedom based on Romans chapter 14 if and you want to, or not. to value it. But then when you say, if you say this is mandated cultural heritage, and I'm like, and I'm not saying Major said that. Okay, I'm not saying he said that. Okay, babe. Yep, yep, yep. Hold on one second. Bye-bye. See y'all later. Bye -bye. Love you. Love you. Take care. Have a good one. I'm not. I'm not. So, yeah. And so when... Oh, when I'm sorry. Um, sister. All right. All right. Good. After Bishop talk, I'm, 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 I'm,
No, no, no. Go ahead, Sister E. You want to say something to, to pass uh, but, or but, to but, Dr. E before? Because I don't want no problems. To, to, to Dr. To doctor, or to, to pass, Pastor Eric Mason's point, when we say feast days and when I've said feast days, and I know Majors has done the same, we understand that when Christ said, he said he's fulfilled it. So when we do things, we do things in remembrance of him. And, and, and that's something that I think I've said numerous times, because we understand that in the past, it was due to the law. Uh, and then when Christ came, it changed. But ultimately, we do this in remembrance of him. It's never a thing of the law. We understand that Christ fulfilled. But when he said he fulfilled the law and the prophets, it never meant for us to step away from the from the commandments of God. And that's key right there. When I talk about the commandments of God, I talked about commandments of God before I came into the understanding that I am an Israelite. The commandments of God was something that was established within me when I was in the Pentecostal church. So that's the whole problem. And, and I think the controversy or the, the going back and forth within commun in the community, people said that you're keeping the commandments for salvation. We understand Christ is salvation, but that did not mean just as James and Jude talked about, that does not, grace did not mean to give us a license for sin. So never once have I said, and, and I think majors, and I know you know that I've never said that. When we do things, we do things in remembrance of him when we're saying the feast days. And I do them. And the Sabbath. So. Yeah, I would say this. I hear what you're saying, um, Sister E. I'm saying, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I'm relating. Like, I don't see Christians saying the law is fulfilled to fulfill sin. I Like, I don't, like, I, I hear Hebrew Israelites across the board saying that. And I'm like, I, I'm not sure. I mean, what, I've heard people. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I hear people yeah, yeah, saying. See, I don't, the law I don't see. So, so yeah, I, when I say the law, like when I say the law is done away with, I'm talking about as a rule of life, as a rule of life under covenant. Um, I'm not talking about like we're not going to say, oh, Jesus came so I can commit adultery. Like, correct. I don't, I don't know any Christian that would say that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would say, okay, let's just not. Let, let's just start coveting now because I live lawless. Yes, they think they would live lawless. Yes. Yeah, there's no Christian th that's worth their weight in anything that would say something stupid like that. Correct. So, so, so for me, when like, see, that's another thing. Like, if if we want to break the law down into what people call those three categories: civil, mm -hmm. civil, moral, and ceremonial. Right. When, when somebody said, "I want to keep his commands uh, by doing the feast days," and I'm saying. So is are the feast days mandatory and not it's, doing because and, and if it's not keeping young poor a sin. No, it, and and no one has ever said that. When, let, when no, I no, no, let the no, I want to hear what Pastor Major say okay. that. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. You could I want to hear Pastor Major on that right there. Because people still saying I'm reading in the comments, it's a works-based salvation. There's works in there anywhere you cut the cake. Come on, man. Oh, with Sister E, I'm sorry. I cut you off and then pass a major. Well, it, well, well, here's the point. I mean, when you think about when the when the feasts were given, when you look at in back in Torah, when the feast was given, was there any condition for any type of stoning or anything of that nature for that, for not keeping it? That's the question that we need to ask. If we understand that there was no punishment for being stoned in the Old Testament, for that or any type of death or anything of that nature, then we look fast forward to the New Testament. They're still keeping these feet because we simply see uh, during Pentecost, they're still keeping the feet. This is after Christ ascends. So they're still keeping Pentecost, but at the same time, they're not viewing it from if I don't keep this feast, even though Paul said I must keep this feast, it wasn't out of a fear of, hey, I'm, if I don't keep this, I'm going to hell or I'm going to be stoned or any type of punishment of that. I think it was because of the fact that they were acknowledging that all of these feasts pointed to the Messiah who came. So therefore, it's a commemoration. It's an honor to even do that. And so I think it's from that perspective. So when we when we say it, and I, can, I can't speak for every Israelite, so that's why I'm using we, those of in our sphere. Mm -hmm. um, we say that from that perspective, that it's an honor. If you go today, a lot of uh, Israelite African tribes Today, they still keep portions. They still they still keep the feasts as well. Many of them who have not been any in any, any, any type of diaspora. So when we start looking at that from that perspective, I think we have to understand that um, we don't push it from the category of if you don't keep this, you're going to be put to death or something of that nature. 
And now when we start talking about these things, I'm around too many Christians to simply say that every Christian is saying that you're against that, that you don't have to keep the law or the law is done away with just for the fact that you can commit willful sin. I would be, I would be ignorant to say that because I'm around too many Christians, even in the fellowship that I'm a part of. So I think that is very important for us to understand these perspectives. I think this conversation, this talk is very important so we can know going forward um, what certain perspectives in, and I agree. We may have to come to a consensus to say, okay, let's get enough of us together to try to come up and get an understanding so we can put it out there on what our position is. Not say the, these churches believe A, B, C, and D. Right, and not for the simple fact to appease Christianity, not for the simple fact to appease the Israelites, because at the end of the day, you're right. If we got to fight against the camp, if we got to fight against Christians, we got to fight against Islam, we do that for the simple sake of, for the sake of the gospel and for what Christ did, not because I'm an Israelite and not because I'm a Christian. In my category, anybody can get it. If you, if you, from my perspective, doctrinally, if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. At the end of the day, that's my perspective. Amen. That's a good point. I'm glad we got to chop it up. Yeah, I would say I'm not. I don't know if I'm saying to please anybody. I think, I think the that's Bible. For sake. I, I think the. I think you just got to be clear. I, I don't think the fact that we're having this conversation, like I'm, I'm a, like in my church, like in in my in my church in different churches. When there's a theological challenge of a lack of clarity, we do what's called a theological paper. And that the, that theological paper is disseminated to give a lot of clarity. I just think it's, again, again, I, I think that, I, but I can't just say in my church, I'm right. accountable to the entire body of those who right. believe. So I can't just say, I can't reduce Christianity or the faith, and we won't call it the way, right? I can't reduce it to Epiphany Fellowship. Yeah, um, right. And so I have to say, I have to be held accountable by those who are servants of Yahweh um, to say, hey, man, bro, like, 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 for instance, I think because I think, um, Pastor, um, uh, Pastor, it, 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 I think what you said is very, very important. I think it can feel like from Christians, if I don't do these things, like, again, what's the for the for the moderate Hebrew Israelite community? What is the is there any place? in the moderate community where I could find a written document on eternal security? Um, is there is there somewhere I can find substitutionary atonement? What's your view of the atonement? What are the theories of atonement? Um, what's your doctrine? Uh, okay, if, if someone says, I believe in the deity of Christ, that needs to be, that like that has to be rigorously written out, theologically communicated, because I think everybody would be like, oh, man, they good. I, and, and again, there Maybe is that. there is a sense in which like the Bible says in Philippians chapter two, be of the same mind, intent on the same purpose. So I think that, I, like, I, 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 if if you be, like whether whether you call yourself a Christian or not, if you believe the orthodox doctrines of the faith, I'm gonna say you're a Christian. I'm gonna be honest with you. You that's know, what I'm, that's what I'm just saying. You know, so so for me, I'm not like that. That's that's really it. That's really it. So I think for me, my biggest thing is, I would encourage my brothers and sisters who are in what's called the moderate community to come up with written documentation that's public that communicates what you believe on orthodoxy outside of videos because videos are important but i think there has to be authority figures pastors elders leaders who put out not just general believers it needs to be first timothy 3 titus chapter 1 Second yeah. Timothy chapter two doctrine setters in the Hebrew Israelite community who set the doctrine of what's believed, and this is where we are. I think that's so important, man. Yeah, uh, and, and, and and Pastor Major, like I said, um, if you you know, anytime you want to come on, Kelly, want to come on, and y'all want to share certain things, I think I, I I I'm willing to help y'all do that because I want people to have an understanding. Because I know y'all, I know your spirit, I know you, sister E, my homegirl. We chop it up all the time. <laughs> But it definitely, I, I do believe it definitely needs to be some clarity. All right. I hey, know hey, I got Kelly on the phone and he said, you know, he, we, we, we talking. I think he see he sees the um, the live. So, he, you know, ultimately, I think even he agrees that, that, you know, we do see differences and, you know, we need to all dialogue and talk. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying now. He we'll just, I, in fact, he's on the phone right now. No, but we'll, so, that's what I'm saying. We'll chop it up. I know my title yeah. was on. Yeah. 
I know my time was on conspiracies and we kind of went down this way, but I think, you know, I thank God. I think it was all needed. Um, Greet sister, greet, greet, greet Lady Mace. Greet, greet Lady Mace for us. Is there anything you want to say in closing? Oh, you don't know he muted White. Where's White? He don't know he muted. Oh, I my man. It was real, real good talking to y'all, man. Okay, you man, jump on anytime, man. We appreciate you, man. We love you. Take care, man. Likewise. <laughs> All right. Let me look at, um, let me see what I got in here. I couldn't even, I'm sorry, y'all. I couldn't read the comments. This is a last minute thing, Pastor, Pastor Major. My bad. Now, um, I think we're going to go ahead, White, and remember, Pastor Mace, you know what it is. Anytime you want to, Pastor Major, you know, anytime you want to jump on to clarify some things with us, with the community, I already got a bad name among urban apologists, but I want people to know what y'all believe. I'm riding out with Sister E. I'm muted from now till the resurrection. Oh, no, Yolanda's in here. Excuse me, Yolanda. I was just joking about that. Grace and peace. But um, Sister E, my homegirl, sometimes I got to mute, mute her, but I want I want the church to know where y'all believe and where y'all stand. Of course, I know y'all, and they constantly telling me some other stuff that, that I know you don't believe, you know? So, 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 however y'all want to talk, however you want to do it, man, you know, y'all, y'all, you know, like you said, you're an honorary member. You can jump on the platform anytime. You know, we just have it open to you because we love you. We love what you're doing. I often tell people, you my equivalent or the Hebrew side, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. It's the same work. I don't see no different. Come on, come to the microphone before, come to the microphone and, and say something. Let me try to read some of these, some of these comments. 